Hello, everybody. Yes, look, I'm um, from the Yarra Indian Miner Action Group, and um, we've taken a bit of a different approach. But uh, like everybody else, we're trying not to reinvent the wheel. So uh, we've called ourselves YMAG, and uh, we've pretty much <laughs> followed Bill's example. So I, I actually started this group up, up. I started off as a um, running it as a project in a land care group. I'm an active member of the Arthurs Creek District Land Care Group. And uh, initially, probably due to Bill's suggestion, I, I got a men's shed to manufacture 20 traps, which were distributed to our local land care members through their land care newsletter. And um, then I thought, well, I really didn't want to continue doing this and nobody else seemed to want to do it either. So through the help of my local shire, which is Nillambic Shire, which is a green wedge shire, I ran an information session and um, they were a bit nervous about this. We were all a bit nervous, really, about the sort of killing aspect. But we sort of forged ahead and I read widely to get all the information on the um, scientific papers and support for killing using carbon monoxide, etc. But anyway, that, that uh, information session went ahead without any problems. There were about 70 people there. And uh, from that, we got enough people who were interested to start up a group. So we called ourselves the Yarra Indian Miner Action Group and we followed the example of Bill's Canberra Group and uh, we, called, we set up our objectives to reduce the impact of Indian miners on our native birds and animals by raising public awareness, um, implementing a humane reduction program and coordinating the manufacture and supply of traps. So really our problem, or we couldn't really advertise to start with because we didn't have many traps. We, we did run a trap making session after that first information session, but we found we could never get more than maybe a dozen to 20 traps made up in a day. Uh, and we, we really haven't had that much success with the men's sheds. The, the Darabin men's shed who I started off with, they didn't want to continue on. Uh, you know, we always have the complaints, it's too hard on their fingers. So, uh, but we were very lucky to have Bill, who, not Bill, um, Max, who's one of our members. He's uh, retired and he's made probably 200 traps. And traps are very high quality, they're, you know, really terrific traps. Uh, so we've sort of just by word of mouth, the, the, the word has spread and we've managed to always be able to provide enough um, traps to supply to potential members uh, and we provide information and advice to those people to get them started and we've set up a website and we still run information sessions and the occasional workshops although now that we're having traps made up by uh, Vic Prisons Victoria we are disinclined to run the trap making sessions because they're very time consuming and we're only volunteers. Uh, so they're, they're the, the uh, successes, really. And um, what we've found hasn't worked so well, really, is the men's shed, unlike in other areas. Um, we've also had some quality control issues with the prisons making the traps up. We generally have to fix every single trap. Um, but, you know, I don't find it's all that hard. Like Things like the clips aren't very good or, you know, maybe the doors don't close very well. It's, it's all pretty simple stuff. Uh, what also doesn't work really is that we're all busy people. We don't have enough time to put into it as, as much time as we would like to uh, make it work really well. So really what our challenges are for the future are to find more members to go on our committee. Pretty much we've all got volunteer fatigue. Um, tra trap manufacturing is, is a very time consuming part so far. Max organises all the manufacturing of the trip, traps. He deals with the prisons. He goes down to sale where we have them made up and he collects the traps and brings them back and then supplies them to people who contact us. Most, most of our contacts come through email. Uh, they must find us through the website or through Bill, refers a lot of people to us. And um, we've actually been very lucky. We've had uh, quite a lot of newspaper articles. There was a, a big article on us in the Sunday Age last year and uh, the reporter who wrote that moved on to another group of local newspapers and they, they ran some articles and so we've had a, a lot of publicity that way. Uh, 
we've now ha had our relationship with Prisons Victoria going long enough that they actually deliver traps to us free sometimes. I've got a hundred traps sitting at my place waiting for distribution and uh, that whenever they have a bit of room on their truck and offer to deliver the traps free, we of course say yes. Uh, so, but anyway, keeping up the supply chain, that's sort of one of our challenges for the future. We have got a few retail outlets who who agreed to distribute traps for us. Um, so that works okay, but then you've still got to keep the supply up. And again, as I said, we're just volunteers. We don't have a lot of time. We're, we're trying to encourage councils around about to come on board, and there are a number of councils now who are starting to be more interested. So whether they actually go the next step of actually supporting the program by providing traps and supporting trappers is yet to be seen, but I think potentially that's what may happen in Victoria. Um, we've thought of making ourselves as a sort of an umbrella group so people can maybe advertise through us or we can um, provide links to other sites through our, our website and we're happy to do that and we, we do provide our documents to anybody who asks, like all the other groups. Um, yeah, in Victoria, we, we know that there's new legislation coming out and we've worried whether that's going to have any impact on us. Um, we don't feel strongly supported by government or, or any other body such as the RSPCA about dip disposing of the miners. Uh, we do emphasise always that it should be done in a hum humane way to comply with the legislation. Uh, but you know, you just never know what's going to happen in the future. Um, this is just, uh, uh, these are just very quickly, we use the PG traps, um, that's a location I use, which is a raised location. Uh, that's a nesting box style trap, we don't use these very much, I do have one of these which I loan out. Uh, these, are, these are made professionally and it has a false bottom and they, I feel they could work well in public situations. Uh, that's one of the, our non-target species. We probably all catch those from time to time. I just think that's a fantastic picture. And that on the left there is Max, who's our wonderful uh, volunteer trap maker. And uh, we wouldn't be where we are without him. He's, he's uh, made probably 200 traps, and like I said before, and we've sold, I think, 600 traps we've got out there now. And that's it. <laughs>